Hi, I'm Dr. Janet Parsons of the Applied Health Research Center of St. Michael's Hospital, and I'm also co-director of the Research Training Center there. I'm uh, an associate professor at the Department of Physical Therapy, the Rehab Sciences Institute, and the Institute of Medical Science at the University of Toronto, and I'm also a CQ fellow at the Dalla School of Public Health there. And today I'm going to talk to you about a technique called broker dialogue, and it's a research method that a number of my colleagues and I have been uh, working on for the last number of years. And uh, so before I get started, I really want to acknowledge those colleagues. First and foremost is my friend and uh, fellow researcher, Dr. Jim Lavery, who is the Hilton Chair in Global Health Ethics, professor, of Hubert Depart the, and professor in the Hubert Department of Global Health and the School of Public Health at Emory University in Atlanta. But pre prior to that, we worked together for a good decade at St. Michael's Hospital and at the University of Toronto. And this is very much something that the two of us have worked on together. The other person that's been really critical, a critical member of our team, is Wendy Rowland, who's an award-winning documentary filmmaker. She's a director, producer, and editor extraordinaire. And she's also, like us, a fellow storyteller. And that's the thing that links all of us together. We're really interested in interviewing people, finding out their perspectives, asking them to tell their stories in compelling ways, and sharing them in innovative, through innovative visual media. She's been a key member of our team who's been with us right from the very beginning. So I thought it was, it was really important to acknowledge that this isn't just my work, but the work of a group of people. So what is this thing called broker dialogue? Well, it's a method for understanding and addressing complex health and social problems by engaging stakeholders from a range of perspectives in dialogue and collective critical thinking. Now, rather than um, spending time exhausting you, uh, uh, Rather than spending time exhausting you describing the method, um, we've actually come up with a three-minute animation that explains to you what the main features of broker dialogue are. So I'm going to show you that, and then I'm going to come back and unpack that a little bit more for you in a minute. Controversial issues arise every day. These issues involve many different people, each with their own interests and perspectives, Sometimes the controversies arise or are perpetuated because the various parties involved don't talk to one another. In fact, there are lots of reasons why people don't talk to one another. And as if that isn't bad enough, when people don't talk to one another, it just makes things worse. But what would happen if some of these obstacles could be overcome? What if we could help to bridge some of these gaps in communication? What if there was a way to bring people together, to help them engage and let them confront each other but in a safe and respectful and honest way, to genuinely share perspectives and learn about each other's interests through dialogue. And then what if you could share that dialogue with other people facing the same issues so that they could benefit from the experience as well? We've created a method that does all of this. We call it broker dialogue. Here's how it works. We start the dialogue about a given issue by identifying someone with legitimate interest in the issue and interviewing them on film to get their perspective. We find out a bit about them, about why the issue is important to them, and about their specific views on the issue. We then ask them a key question. Is there anyone that you would like to have a dialogue with about this issue? There always is. Broker dialogue gives the participants ultimate control over what other people in the dialogue will see from their interviews. So after reviewing their own video footage, and after they have identified clips that they want to share with others, we take their footage to the person they wanted to engage in dialogue. Now imagine how the dialogue can expand as participants start to pose questions to other people and make comments and responses to the videos they are shown. And imagine how we can build up a record of these exchanges using video editing, making sure that all the participants have a fair opportunity to be heard and have their perspectives taken seriously. We know that participating in honest dialogue can change people's views about controversial issues. It may be one of the only things that actually can. But what we're trying to learn is whether creating dialogue in situations where people are not talking or engaging respectfully and constructively with one another can have an impact beyond the participants in the dialogue themselves. So the final step in the broker dialogue method involves using the resulting films or maybe even animations like this one or stage plays or other types of creative applications 
to share the dialogue with other interested parties to try to encourage dialogue and constructive engagement about the issue more broadly in society. The possibilities are endless. Broker Dialogue. Building understanding where it's needed the most. So you've seen the video on what the main t sort of uh, activities are when creating a broker dialogue, but um, let's, talk, let's unpack this a little bit further. So why dialogue? What is it about dialogue that's important? Well, dialogue doesn't actually mean just speaking between two people, but dialogue means literally through words. It's the foundation of social and polit political life, and it reveals people's fundamental values and interests, and it's how we come to know one another. It's also a fundamental principle of deliberative democracy, and it's how we confront and accommodate diverse interests in a range of public contexts. We had a number of assumptions as we were starting to put together the broker dialogue method, and these were that people are willing to engage in dialogue about important issues, whether they're health or social issues, and the di dialogue can reveal important aspects and dynamics of phenomena. So dialogue is, an, is a dyna dynamic and evolving process. And studying dialogue helps us to understand controversies in unique ways because it's really about the interaction of perspectives. And we also felt, had a hunch, that there were transform transformational features of dialogue that we wanted to explore. Um, I mentioned at the very outset that we're interested in storytelling. And if you, this, because we're talking about um, qualitative research and CQ is very interested in theoretical, theoretically informed research, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the theoretical underpinnings that underlie why we developed the method in the way that we did. And a lot of that has to do with storytelling. So we use narrative methods and we founded, we founded the method specifically based on those principles. And the reason we like narrative methods um, for research is that they privilege stories and their accessibility to a range of audiences. Stories are also, can be considered evidence that inform behavior. And they fulfill both descriptive and prescriptive functions, by which I mean that if you're asking somebody to tell a story, it not, they not only tell you what happened, but also they frequently tell you what they think ought to ha happen or could have happened differently. The other thing is that when we tell stories to one another, just like when I'm doing this video with you, is it's a performance. Um, we perform our identities when we tell stories. We're trying to portray, our, portray ourselves and our interests and our values in a way that we feel comfortable telling you. Um, the interactive nature of storytelling and dialogue is incredibly important to the work that we do as well. And we're informed by the work of Art Frank, um, a medical sociologist, who talks about stories begetting stories, by which we mean, so when I tell you a story about something, it makes you think about your own experience and makes you want to tell your own story in response. I've already mentioned somebody, Arthur, Arthur Frank, who informs our work, but um, there's other narrative theorists as well, if you're interested. So there's Paul Ricoeur, who wrote a wonderful book called Oneself as Another. There's Emmanuel Levinas and his concept of face. Um, and there's the philosopher Hans Jörg Gadamer and his idea of the fusion of horizons. And then there's um, Bakhtin, who also talked about the non-finalizing nature of stories. And so that's important in broker dialogue because we feel that when we actually get people to share their experiences in a dialogic process, that the, the idea is that when people see the film with a broker dialogue, that they will continue that conversation forward and that they'll continue, other people will start to contribute to it and that it will grow beyond. And it's very much about the relationship between self and other. So now you might want to know, why film? Well, film is an important way in which we can represent experiences, human experiences from a range of perspectives. And representations matter because they shape the experiences of those who are represented and misrepresented. Michel Barabay wrote a wonderful book called um, Life as We Know It, A Father, a Family, and an Exceptional Child. And he was very concerned about how the, um, the experiences of his son with Down syndrome would be represented to people in the broader society and to the people that he knew. And he felt it was incredibly important that how we represent people with Down syndrome in various 
formats, whether it's stories, uh, interactions, um, artworks, that those would actually shape the experiences of the people that they're about. And so we felt that that was a, a really important feature of this. And we felt that films as a, representation, as a form of representation are incredibly important and incredibly powerful. When we do broker dialogue, when, whenever possible, we try to film the face of another. And seeing the face of another is an, ex is an extremely powerful uh, process and it engages audiences in a very profound way. The other thing that's wonderful about f using film is the richness of the data collected. There's multiple dimensions for analysis, so gestures, um, emotion, uh, context, um, language used. So it's, 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 it's a really wonderful way in which to um, conduct research, and it's much richer than just the textual type of research that we often um, uh, work with. And film also is a familiar and accessible medium which engages a broad range of stakeholders. So it takes us way beyond the realm of academics and we can engage a whole lot of other audiences that might not otherwise be able to be part of what might seem to be on the surface an academic conversation. We also use, as we described in the video, a participant-driven driven editing process. So it means that film becomes a safe space for interaction because people can actually use the editing with us to portray their perspective, portray their viewpoint in a way that they feel comfortable showing. And nobody is required in a broker dialogue to share anything that they don't want to share with another person. And we really stand firmly by that principle. We also, in terms of background, are informed by a long tradition in visual anthropology and visual sociology. So for those of you that have background in that, you may be familiar with ethnographic film, but there's a long, long tradition in, um, in the social sciences in terms of using visual methods. They're just relatively new in terms of health services research. So in terms of our methods of analysis, um, there are multiple levels of analysis that can be used. So um, it, that, are, that we use in a broker dialogue. We use um, not only narrative analysis, which looks at uh, story, form, and tone, as well as content, but we also do conceptual and thematic analysis, coding each in individual interview, transcript, and we also cross-compare between, um, uh, between interviews and be interviews between participants and within participants' sequential interviews. This uh, thematic analysis using the interview transcripts is then incorporated into the editing process, which is also analytical, and then we also go back and look at the visuals and see wherein the differences between the text and the visuals actually lie. But where we really, really spend a lot of our time is in the interaction of perspectives. So what people take up and resist in the stories and accounts of others. So what do people not include the film? What do they choose not to put in the film is something that we track. We don't include it in the film, but we actually think about it from an analytical standpoint. We also are interested in when there's certain topics that people just don't want to cover that or don't want to engage with. So when there's silences around something, when we're anticipating somebody um, interacting with a, a particular topic, we think that's really important too. So listening for those important silences is also important in broker dialogue. Finally, the reactions to the assembled footage is actually where the brokering comes in and how participants' views may change over time. So when we first started, we were actually quite naive. We thought, well, if you could just hear the perspective of the other person told in a compelling and interesting way, and if you had a chance to sit down and listen to that person's perspective, then you'd get it and you'd be willing to either change your perspective or be willing to engage with them and to have a respectful conversation. However, we found early on that when we just shared the perspectives of others and people just saw them in isolation after they'd done their own uh, interview, that it wasn't until we actually started to cut the footage together and they saw their perspective juxt juxtaposed with others that they went, wow, you know, I don't think we're actually that far apart. We think you need to go back and edit, is what they actually told us. So um, we found that really uh, interesting and a really important learning part with broker dialogue. And we realized that that was where the part of the brokering really comes in. It's about that editing piece. So we have a role to play as analysts in that process. So to summarize um, and to sum up a little bit about broker dialogue as we close here. So 
what this method is about is that it's designed for situations in which important interests are in tension or conflict, and there's no meaningful dialogue between the parties. The broker dialogue method aims to identify solutions through mediated dialogue among the parties. And as I mentioned already, it provides a safe space with brokering and control of content to promote meaningful engagement among the participants and respect, respectful interaction between them. Um, we feel that it's important that we, we provide spaces in which constructive confrontation and interrogation in, in, the, in the best part, uh, in the best sense of the word, not in terms of uh, animosity, but in terms of real engagement. That that's where the clarification of interests and rationales behind positions, why people think what they do, why they hold the views they do, that that's incredibly important um, in order to actually start a respectful conversation. The other thing is that by using stories and having people share their perspectives in these, way, in these ways, we think that it really humanizes problems. It's about the particularizable uh, nature of evidence when we think of stories, as opposed to generalizable, um, which is, I think, uh, a, a real beauty of the method. Um, it can also elucidate pathways for constructive change. So when we've, in, when we've conducted broker dialogues, we often find that people start to look for solutions together. And uh, again, finally, the, uh, there's a wide range of dissemination, so being able to share these, um, these films broadly with people, um, sharing maybe um, even aspects of it in terms of a story library together, um, whereby um, they can be implemented and evaluated as well. So we think there's some unique opportunities there. If you want to know more about Broker Dialogue, we have an open access paper and we encourage you to uh, take a look at it and share it broadly. We'd, we'd be very happy for you to contact us if you have any questions. And um, I just wanted to wish you all the best with your research and um, engaging in creative and critical conversations. Thanks very much. Thank you.